channel. Today we are out on site with Mervin and Elite Metal Roofing. We'd used Mervin on a project back uh, probably about three or four months ago and uh, I'd ask him then if we could come out and video kind of what they do and talk a little bit about standing seam metal. So Mervin, uh, appreciate you having us out and I guess where it all starts really I think is right here at this machine because you're literally making these panels on site. Yes. You're literally taking though just a, a solid coil of of steel that's yes. it's pre-painted and it starts in the machine at one end is just a flat piece of metal yes and as it comes through here it just it, starts taking shape yes and turning into the finished product that you've got to put on the roof right yes, correct and really cool to see this thing operate and the fact that it's punching your holes it's doing everything for you that's right and i saw you guys messing with the screen but you can actually put in you were telling me off camera a minute ago that you could put in an entire roof worth of metal and it's just going to sit here and keep running the different length metal you need and everything. Correct. As long as I keep taking the panels off of the uh, center there, I, it keeps on going. Um, you can leave a panel sitting for a whole hour until it shuts off and quits running. Um, but you can leave that panel so sitting there. So does it there. know one's sitting here? Yes. That, so it won't just that, keep that, shoving them out. It's yeah, even that the, smart. That yellow part there, that's the sensor to where gotcha. it, it recognizes a piece still laying there. And until you move that piece, it won't run another one. That, that's really neat. Though. It is. It's I was really thinking neat. that maybe it would just keep shoving. Yeah. You, you had no, it, it does something. not. You can leave that piece there for a whole hour until that thing shuts down. And then you'll have to restart it. Wow. But it's, it's a really cool machine. Um, what the benefit is of having a machine like this on the job site, I guess, uh, say you'd had to measure off a roof, you know, and you pre-order your metal, it's more of a chance that you have to go back and reorder stuff. And it's, a lot it's, of a it's, it is. It's just a whole lot harder to get your metal on 100%. Yeah. And this here, you trim the roof out and then you just start putting on metal. Yeah, and we can talk about that a little bit. We had two sanding seam jobs that came up at the same time, and one of them was in that traditional sense that Mervin's talking about where that they pre-ordered that metal, and we did have mm -hmm. some problems. The other thing that, that is really impressed me about what Mervin is doing is the way that he's doing his trim work and how everything fits together, because sanding seam is nothing new. Sanding seam is a product that's been around for 100 plus years now, but everything was done by hand and with hand Correct. benders and the way they would fit the ridge cap and do different parts was all hand work and even though this is probably about the most leak resistant roof we could build there was always these gaps and things that if you didn't do every hand bent detail right that was just a place Correct. for water a place Correct. for leak and the way that Mervin is doing this trim is just really really different and i want to take a look at some mm -hmm. of that and talk about how we really fit those parts together yes. and, and how that works. So Mervin, talking about how we would traditionally put the top of this roof or, or the bottom because we would actually break into mm -hmm. the bottom and I'm not sure how you do that on your system but I want to start with what we do up at the ridge because it's so different than the traditional way and so you're going to show us how we would traditionally dress the top of this yes. panel, right? Yes. just kind of as we go you know you notched it you've bent this piece up because this would deflect rain that's being pushed up towards the ridge cap right correct and then what are we doing here getting this out of the way here this here we bend over I got you. that seals that now we'll take this piece
Now here would be the traditional way. Here's your roof. So, so it's clamped what's together. What's the potential of leaking right there? Uh, on a traditional roof, <clears throat> really, it's a big chance of leaking. Because is there any way to seal this this hem or anything? I mean, other than just some geo sealer yeah. product like that. Yeah. Um, on a traditional the, the traditional way, uh, it is hard to do that. But then you'd have a piece of ridge cap on a traditional roof where they clamp on here and they pop rivet it in. Then it's like this. And is that a bracket that the cap would then snap over? Or yes. Is that, okay. Yes. And then I had seen one one time where they actually put, they called it a Z-bar that they put here. Yes. And then the cap snapped over that. So that, that's different another. ways you could cap the top of it. Correct. But the end of the day, we've got this joint on every single panel uh -huh. that to me is, I'm not going to say it'll leak, but it's not ideal. What so. we do once we have it up underneath our ridge cap or our J channel, we go back with a caulk gun and just put a little uh, caulk, bead of caulk in there. If you were doing it yes. the old school, we'll call no, it. No, even, even, even the new. Even what you're doing. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. So you're bending, you're hemming this up even when you're using your yes. J channel. Correct. No kidding. Correct. So that's what I want to talk about next. This is what, when uh, they came out to do a job for us several months ago, this is what was really impressive to me and different. And just show them, this is a piece of J channel, uh, you know, similar to what we'd use on any other metal product. It's just bigger to accept this panel. And it slides in here so that really at the end of the day, that's providing some of our leak protection, right? Correct. Correct. His ridge, or his, uh, do you call this J channel or what do you call this? Yes, J channel. Okay. Yep. So this J, this lip is actually where your ridge cap is going to hook over this, correct? Correct. And then do you rivet any of that or what, what yes. are you doing there? Yes. Each splice we rivet into here. Okay, each so slice each of the ridge. Each splice in the ridge cap, you're going to rivet it into the face of this. Correct. And are we riveting in the side? Yes, correct, right so, here. So again, we're going in the side, we're not going into the top of it. Correct. Where we're creating more of a problem. So. Right. Uh, I just really like this. This is, you know, not uh, something that Mervyn dreamed up. I just never seen it. We had only been around the really traditional standing seam, a lot of hand bending and uh, all that kind of stuff. So the other thing that I want to touch on before we go any further is talking about how these panels actually go together and go on the roof. You'll see the the punches, and so you're going to use a little flat headed screw, right? Yes. That goes in there. And so these little guys are going to screw down through that slot and into the roof. So that one's not punched real well, but that screw is going to drop down in here. And what happens to cover all these guys up? So we've got screws in all these holes, and then we're going to wind up covering that with the next piece of metal. And you hear it snap together. So this particular product that you're using, I call it a snap block sanding seam. I, what do you? That's the actual same name. Same things for it. you're calling it. Yep. Um, there are a few different types of sanding seams on commercial buildings. We've used some actual mechanically hemmed. They uh -huh. call it so that this seam. There, there's a machine that uh, the only ones I've been around are actually the ones that travel the roof. Correct. You know, that'll pull themselves up. Yep. Uh, where that it it travels and hems that seam over nice and tight. But either way, th the magical thing to me about this is that we just covered up all the screws. Correct. We don't have any fasteners exposed because likewise on your ends, on your corners and stuff, you're doing that to where that you're basically covering everything up, right? Correct. Now, say here is uh, your corner. This here is inside the corner, so it can't come up. It's up against already. Once you slide it in, it's already up against. Now, say... Your end piece is right here. This is how wide your end piece is. We rip it and then we bend it up an inch and a half to where once you slide that piece into the corner, it's up against and it cannot lift. So that the, the corner is kind of up, actually helping yes. hold the panel down. And Correct. what holds the corner on? How are you fastening it? It's got a nailing flange similar to this that you fasten it to. Um, and inside here in the corner, there is a lip that comes out and over and this here sits on top 
That way when the water, if water does get in behind this panel, it cannot come out past the corner. It still runs down off of the roof. Gotcha. Do you have a corner here? I do. So this is... I do have is... a corner here. This here is the corner. You fasten here. You're fastening it down to the roof is what you're saying. Yes, you fasten okay. down to the roof here. Your panel comes in and sits in here. And this is what this here does and this. In case water does come in behind your panel, it either goes in behind here and runs down the roof or it comes in and stops here and runs down the roof. So this is almost making a drip edge for you. Correct. You're not using this. This is not fastening in any way. No. It's not interlocking into the piece no. of metal. It's just... Yep. Ish. That we're creating a, a channel yes. to, to run the water out because yep. that thing is actually hemmed all Twice. the way back over yep. because it's bent all the way out here at the edge. Yep. So this right this part here is double layer. So do you put any screws or rivets in this outside face at all or not not, not unless we have to it's just lay for, bad for, and yeah. need to try to straighten it out. Yeah. Okay. So what about this other piece of trim right here? Now what is that guy? This here is sidewall. Uh it's actually oh, to go up against a, a sidewall yes. coming up. It's actually sidewall. wider than it normally is. Normally we only have five inches, but I needed this special order for a chimney. Um, but yes, this is the sidewall, and this works similar to the corner. Um, yeah, I can see the J section is pretty yeah. much identical. This is going to turn up the chimney or the the sidewall, and then depending on whether it's a sidewall, we would. Just depending the, on how we counter flash. Yes. It, Say it would day, be just a sidewall against another wall, it would just be like this, and this here would just be against the wall. And in our case where we use a lot of zip, we would just be zip taping the top, Correct. or uh, if we were doing Tyvek, we're trying to bring the Tyvek down over the top of it. Correct. Or in the case of a chimney or brick house, maybe we're actually cutting and doing yes. counter flash. Yes, like this here, this here was for a chimney, so I bent this over an inch and a half or a half inch and then I cut into the chimney a half inch. So you inch actually and did, you didn't counter flash. You yeah. made this the flash. Yes, yes. That's so, very interesting. So up your chimney you out. you see just a straight line. You don't see the jumps all in the flashing. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't like the step. We, yeah. we always cut straight. Yep. But, you know, what I was thinking is that we would put the counter flashing over it, but instead you're you're literally making that be a one piece flashing Correct. with what you're doing. Correct. So that's that's very interesting. Yep. yep. All right. Okay, so what we have here is uh what we call our ridge cap. This here is the J channel we fasten down to the roof first. Uh it's got your big nailing flange here. And then once you fasten that, this here with those hems right here will slot over this J channel like this. Okay, so it's just going to turn up. Th these would obviously be fastened down to the roof deck Correct. and already be on that angle. Yep. And I guess you can essentially flex. Do you order yeah. this to the pitch of the roof? Or we do. do you just, okay. We do. So um, you actually pre-order it based on an estimation of your roof angle Correct. that this thing's bent to be yep. a... And you can, you can flex it out and, and if you have to. But yes, the, all ridge cap is pre-ordered to the pitch awesome. of the roof. So at the bottom of the roof, we're putting in a drip edge. Correct. Uh, just almost like we use on a shingle roof or anything. It, it looks like it's a little bit taller. Yes. And we would slaughter gutter up in behind it. Every, everything as far as that goes is pretty much exactly like a shingle roof. But the difference is, is that you're winding up where, where you hemmed up at the top, you're actually hemming down. Down on the bottom. And folding all the way back underneath and hemming it to that drip edge. Correct. 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 We uh, put a piece on, like you said, we hem the bottom over, and then once a piece is on and fastened, you take this tool and slide it up against and just crimp it to where it's tight. So that's really clamping and that joint It's clamped that joint down real, down real tight. Correct. And, and then you, know, notice you, you bend your ends over, you're cutting the bottom of that panel so that we're covering up each Correct. sheet there, even at the ends of it, and just trying to make that really watertight as mm -hmm. well. Yep. So, very interesting product, and like we were talking off camera, you know, one of the, obviously the first thing that makes this different than a shingle or a screw down metal roof is the fact that we're covering all the fasteners up, and we're not just laying the next shingle over the top of some nails that 
may get uplifted and exposed, we're, we're covering them completely up completely. with a piece of metal. Yes. But then also the way that we're locking everything in from the corners to the ridge to down here at the bottom, we're not going to have loose shingles. We're going to have a storm that comes through that just rips the top of the house off. Correct before it takes the metal off right. and you know i can even talk about that we had we owned a building that was built in the late 1800s that the roof had been on there for a hundred plus years when we bought it and it was finally leaking you know but it had been there for a hundred plus years right there's no doubt it was the original roof and when we started trying to take it off we were literally taking it off we couldn't even get the pans apart right they had hand hemmed it and we were taking off you know 10 foot pieces at once yeah. because it wouldn't turn loose so, right uh, it's a very very interesting product and um you know if you're looking for that i would in encourage you to reach out to marvin mervin uh sorry because I, uh, <laughs> I deal with your brother too <laughs> but reach out to mervin uh, he's located in mumfordville mumfordville i was going to say horse cave it's close <laughs> but uh, so you kind of service this southern yes eastern kentucky region i'm in i'm located in mumfordville but we go 80 mile radius uh so that's pretty good distance louisville that's gonna get you to bowling gonna green town, so you're gonna go yeah. up even further yeah. so um, we go north, it's not south. something that's used a lot, and that's what makes it pretty neat to find somebody that does a really good job doing it. Uh, this isn't something that everybody does, and, and I don't know what he's – and I'm not going to ask you what's invested in that trailer. But, you know, that, that roll former and the generator to where they can just roll up wherever they're going and run this stuff off, it's, it's an incredible process. And we are really glad that we got to use you on a job. And um, like I say, we'll put his information, his number and stuff in the description in case you want a standing seam roof. Until next time, uh, just be sure and hit that subscribe button and give us a big thumbs up, and we sure appreciate it.